Greetings, dear friends. Welcome to the Creative Lab Awakening the Souls of Our Nations. 2025 initiative in cooperation with the Hekal Group from Jerusalem and the Klanschkale Group from Germany welcomes you to our circle. Thank you for your continuous service. Over to you, Uta. Thank you, Alexandra, and uh, welcome, welcome back, friends, into the Nations Lab. And today we have a birthday, the birthday of Roberto Assagioli, very beloved. And so we take this opportunity to touch back on the original impulse of this nation's lab. Because it started with Alexander asking me if I would be willing to focalize a series on the psychosynthesis of the nations. And uh, since we have some experience with this, having studied, worked with the psychosynthesis of the Jewish people for many years, having done an extensive research in Asajoli's archive. So the Hechal group, with the support from the German Klangschale group, we decided to take on this task. And now I think if I count right, we are in the fifth year. So here in this lab, we are working with national and international consciousness through this lens of psychosynthesis. Psychosynthesis, just a few words maybe about it. As the name implies, it deals with psychological fields. could be on the individual level or as a, in a group setting or on the collective level. And uh, with the goal of leading a process of integration towards bringing the various parts of the entity into a synthesis, into a wholeness. A psychological field has an emotional and a mental component. And we in our DK language call it karma manasic field. And we know this field is rather foggy and disorderly for a long time until the entity develops the capacity to hold it, to purify it, to harmonize this field of consciousness and in this process become what we call an integrated personality, which is then a useful instrument for the soul. And we know what is true for an individual is also true for a nation and for humanity as a whole. So we look at humanity as a whole through the lens of psychosynthesis. And uh, for doing this, for psychosynthesis on the international level, we need to develop, of course, a global view. We need to learn to observe the dynamics on the world agenda to discern the collective thought forms which are underlying these outer happenings. In order to do so, the first thing that we need is a stable center from which at all to hold such a large view. And here our council chamber has already become quite a stable observation space by now. 
it's, as we said many times, it aspires to be part of the Ajna center of the planet. And, and it's, it's the Ajna center of the planet that is doing the planetary psychosynthetic process. And this happens on the mental plane, employing a scientific attitude, as Asa Jolie calls it. And uh, this is what we have been um, practicing in recent months, in the last few nation lab sessions. <clears throat> we could say that the model of psychosynthesis that Asa Jolie um, has put together is actually a condensed form of the constitution of man that the Tibetan has given us. And for us, it provides like a scaffolding or a template which we can use when we now go into um, into experimentation and and uh, um, looking at different parts of this huge entity of humanity, planetary psychosynthesis. So we can use this template this structure that Asajoli has built in order to fill into it the puzzle pieces that we may discover during our psychosynthetic investigation. So actually we have a stable observation point or place, space, and we have a research method in psychosynthesis and we have a template into which to record our results. So this is quite a laboratory already. So we are now ready to invite into our awareness this very large picture, planetary psychosynthesis. So we will look at it now in meditation and see if we can build it, build this template, build the possibility for planetary psychosynthesis into our council chamber awareness. Impressing this concept into the mental space of our council chamber almost like a floor plan on which we then can build in an orderly way as we go. Okay, so let us try it out. Withdraw our attention now into our inner stillness taking a few deep breaths grounding in our body establishing our connection to the earth and standing in the love and the freedom of our soul, of ourselves as the soul.
and opening our consciousness now to the call for planetary psychosynthesis as the overarching, overlighting purpose that we hold together. And following this call, let us now make our way to the beautiful building set in nature, which we already know very well by now. Entering into the quiet and clear and spacious council chamber of elders in training. Taking our places in geometric order. Sensing the atmosphere in the chamber, the geometrical harmony. In the center of the chamber, visualize the flame of our combined, sustained will to love. Tuning our hearts to it. and holding together this space of intent, sustained love. And tuning now into the mental space of the council chamber, a calm, clear, lighted space. It vibrates to the rate of the Ajna center of the planet. And through this vibration, we are linked with our fellow world workers in all nations. Staying focused in the group Ajna Center, let us now mentally reach out towards the Ashramic world. Gradually fine tuning our vibration, swinging into the Ashramic thought field. Our feet remain solidly on the floor of the council chamber. And we hold this mental field stable. And 
that we become aware of four great Deva beings helping us to hold this space. One standing at each direction, at the north, the south, the east and the west. Now, from this stable ground, from our high vantage point, let us now look at our Earth, at the globe, the planet, as it revolves around its north-south axis. The North Pole always aligned with the Pole Star. Let's take a moment to get this visualization as clear as we can. Our planet revolving around the North-South axis from East to West. Now get a sense of the human consciousness which is held on the planet, the Kama Manasic field. Let us realize the richness of human consciousness, the different strands in the different locations, the different ways in which humans understand and organize themselves within the planetary reality. Just recognizing this fact of this huge diversity. And perhaps having a look especially into areas, continents, cultures, which are less familiar to us. less familiar human consciousnesses. Let's take a moment for this. Okay, refocusing in the council chamber and envision a process of integration of these different strands of human consciousness 
each continent playing its role, each culture weaving into the rich human tapestry. Envisioning a process of planetary cycle synthesis. And let us impress now or imprint now the possibility, the concept of planetary psychosynthesis into the mental substance of our council chamber. So it may become an overall structure or template into which to record and order our observations that will follow. And imagine the deva beings imprinting this structure with us, maybe like a floor plan. Planetary psychosynthesis. Taking another moment holding this possibility as clear as we can. and releasing now all effort just breathing and enjoying for another moment each other's presence in our shared space in our council chamber it is getting more and more built each time And gradually returning to our personal grounding now. Taking a moment to note down any thoughts before we will have a sharing.
Okay. And when you're ready to share, please just raise your hand so Alexander can unmute you. Rosita, yes, please. This is Rosita I'm from Britain. Um, I felt that we are creating a mandala in this world and that each um, culture is evolving as a sort of sub-personality of the whole. Um, in as an experiment, I saw it very much as an experiment, and the end goal is to create this very beautiful mandala, and that the the whole really is the one in the many and the many in the one, and each one is a precious jewel. Mm. Beautiful mandala, yes, thank you, Rosita. Hi, this is Helen from Israel. Hey, uh, Rosita, I had the same uh, sense of creating. Uh, it's beautiful that you saw it as a mandala. I saw it as, um, and I imagined our uh, council chamber with a multi-dimensional texture um, in creation and the, the, the full volume uh, was a kind of ordering template or scaffold ready to gather the new elements that take position in this template and gel into a, in, into a, um, <laughs> a, a more complete concentration of the wider scope that we are beginning to gather, to understand, and to bring together.
Oh, hello, everyone. Uh, this is Jonathan in South Africa. Uh, my impression uh, I'd like to share is that as we build this collective awareness, um, contributing our part within a world group, it is to become uh, resonant with the planetary field of consciousness as a whole. I believe that's what we're speaking of. Um, you mentioned uh, the karma monastic mind <clears throat> of humanity, Uta. And another word that comes to my mind is uh, the new sphere. Uh, the field, uh, as I said, the field of consciousness that humanity is evolving, you know, the many focal points, each of us one focal point of that planetary consciousness. Uh, as it is evolving and uh, as we move into re resonance with it. That term, the new sphere, was um, originally uh, created, I believe, by Telia de Chardin, but uh, the work of uh, Jose Arguiles and uh, his essential work by the Mayan calendar uh, has been significant in moving it more into the public uh, uh, domain. So that, that was my uh, impression. Thank you. And this is Alexandra. As we held our perception open to the different facets of the human consciousness, it came as a multicolored, multidimensional, as Helen said. It's uh image uh, and as Rasita said mandala yes and i remembered about the uh model of the evolutionary development uh called spiral dynamics uh, developed by don edward beck and christopher cohen and uh It provides the systemic approach of understanding of different stages of uh, evolutionary development of consciousness as of the individuals, uh, groups, and uh, nations uh, as a whole. And it's a uh, I think it's important to hold uh, for us these wholeness, this psychosynthesis of the evolutionary continuum for all of us. And it's not that someone is better than others. It's it's a path. It's it's as an it's an unfolding path that we all moving through. And uh, It's also important to remember that 
still big part of humanity is on in the evolutionary cycle of development going through own mutable experiences of material plane going through the uh, cycles of material living and it's a necessary stage which eventually leads to the shift of the evolutionary will or, or the shift of the will from involutionary to evolutionary path and in order to come to that turn of the uh, will of development from involutionary to evolutionary direction we all need to go through that involutionary stage and the question is what those of us who made that turn how do we hold the space for the rest of humanity which is pretty big majority <laughs> supporting their path gradual path that will lead that to that point of the turn Uh, hello, this is Judy. Uh, Uta, I want to thank you for the uh, earlier discussion on uh, basically how we got here in terms of uh, Asajoli and connecting it um, with the, the structure that uh, we are building. I think uh, for me what happened uh, was an understanding of being part of the one life. Uh, we stood in the Ajna Center together. We were elders in training. Uh, we were at that hierarchical level. We moved down into cultures that we knew and cultures that we did not know. And throughout that whole range, we held a point of consciousness. And at every point, we could say, I am that. And when that consciousness is there, you understand, we understand as a group that we are part of this one life. We are, are all those facets. So how do we help our brothers? In some ways, we are them. And standing at our highest level, I think um, that evolution can happen quicker because we are that uh, and we stand in this whole array of higher and lower consciousness. And uh, I think that is the quickening that uh, is happening at this point in time. So it was very beautiful. Thank you. Can you hear me? Uh, yes, uh, Uta, there was echo, so I had to mute you. Uh, I hope you can unmute yourself when you're muted. No, no, I cannot. Actually, now uh, I put headphones. Is that better? It's good, yes. but it will be clear only when someone else speaks if there is echo or not. Uh -huh. So I try to uh, to mute myself when somebody else speaks. But I'm not sure I will be able to unmute again. It's, it's, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for all these sharings. 
um, interesting to compare or to bring in perspective the psychosynthetic approach to the what Jonathan, what you said about the new sphere and uh, Sasha about the spiral dynamics. Um, I guess as we move into Aquarius, um, we will go deeper into all kinds of templates. Uh, very interesting. Yeah, that brings us to the second part here. And it is something that we need to be aware of that our nation's lab here, when we see it in the planetary perspective, we, we realize it is a Western lab. Most of us, if not all participants, have a Western consciousness and more so we all have the teachings of the Tibetan master as our spiritual background. So we are actually a quite specific homogeneous group and we endeavor to um, comprise, to embrace a vast diversified phenomenon, but from this homogeneous base. Um, and so it's, I find it interesting that this fact is, is actually a tiny uh, replica of the fact that the United Nations and also the International Court of Justice, they have been founded by the Western culture for the whole of humanity. And these um, international uh, institutions are still located in the Western world. So we could say Europe and by extension the USA have laid the groundwork for the international institutions. And so these are colored by the Western culture and the values. And um, perhaps we can say that much of the present world tension has to do with precisely this and with the growing need for a new balance. The Western dominance needs to go down, give way, so the other cultures that grow now in strength and, and rightfully demand to become equal players on the world stage, to give them space. And so this is a process that is happening now. Um, and of course, it's a good and healthy sign when we look at it uh, from the perspective of planetary psychosynthesis. It's an important phase. Of course, it comes with, with this huge tension and great danger and suffering. But we know, we have been told by the Tibetan that crises are vital in the development of individuals and of humanity. So our job as the aspiring Ajna center of the planet is to recognize what wants and needs to happen on the planet and to pioneer this in our own consciousness, so to, to become aware of this rebalancing that is going on and um, doing it in our 
small way in ourselves, in our own consciousness. And that probably, first of all, means for many of us Westerners to stretch our awareness, first of all, beyond our Western sphere. Ask ourselves, what do we really know about the Kama Manasic field of other cultures? To become aware that we live in a thoughtscape, maybe we can call it, our own thoughtscape. And how can we really know what is going on in the consciousness, in the thoughtscape of other cultures like China, Arab culture, Russia, Africa, so on, the cultures of the so-called global south. What consciousness is being developed there? Which new thought forms may arise there? It's probably you know, it's, it's, um, we are so used to, to think that new thoughts and positive ways of organizing the world mainly come from the Western world, because this is how it has been for so long. And can we de deconstruct this and look out for new impulses developing in other strands of human consciousness. So let's just do a brief meditation to have an, an overlook, overview of this, not going too deep, just have a first impression again of this Kama Manasic field of humanity from this rebalancing perspective. So that maybe in later sessions we could go into more detailed views, like, for example, uh, looking at our own nation or any other nation uh, in this context of this planetary rebalancing process underway. Okay, so let us come back into our council chamber into this stable quiet space. The will to love and the mental spaciousness and the four devas helping us to hold this space. And having another look now on our planet again, revolving around its north-south axis from east to west. and looking into the Kama Manasic field of humanity. This new sphere.
And now focusing in on the Western thoughtscape, the Western part of it. And looking, observing for a moment how the Western world has seeded human consciousness in the last several hundred years. And where we have gotten to now, where it has brought us in terms of consciousness on the planet. And now having a look at the thought life of humanity outside the Western world. Just a general overview, just sensing into it what kind of consciousness different from the West. And let us now turn our attention to be to the tension line between the spheres of influence of the Western world and the non-Western nations. The tension line, especially prominent now in East Europe and in West Asia. And look at it in the wider context. See these eruptions in the Kama Manasic field of humanity. Let's take a moment to discern what is being wrought out on this tension line. Trying to see it as hierarchy sees it.
having now a look at how this huge force field, this upheaval, how it affects, first of all, the Western sphere. What does this clash cause in the Western sphere? What is disintegrating? Which old forms give way? And which new impulses or reorderings take shape, take place? Take a moment for this. Just opening to impression, not so much making a mental effort, just sensing into it. Taking another half a minute. Okay. And now we look at the other side. How do these crisis points in Eastern Europe and in the Middle East affect the other countries? What is now happening there in response to these crisis points playing out? Let us look for any new impulses, perhaps integration processes and alliances emerging from these crisis points. Just a, a general sense, not too analytical. Take another minute. OK, 
Okay. And zooming out now, just having another overall view of this Kama Manasic field of humanity. Just for another moment. Holding this planet, this field in its wholeness in our consciousness. And gently releasing our observation, regathering in the council chamber, just for a few seconds resting in each other's presence and breathing out. taking a minute to note down any impressions before our sharing. Okay, whenever you're ready, let's start sharing. Uh, hi, it's uh, Jill here from England, and I've noticed here that um, anti-Jewish feeling and Islamophobia is on the rise. Um, it's putting people in fear who come from those areas that are affected by the conflict, um, walking around and showing their national uh, nationality or in particular their religion because, because they're afraid of being attacked or some other nasty event um, and also ukraine refugees were accepted very readily right from the beginning i don't think it's quite so true now but not so many palestinian refugees appear to be allowed in and I'm wondering if 
that is a case of the West versus the East, as it were. Thank you. Hello, Desha here in Canada. Uta, you asked us to reflect on the rebalancing taking place between the axes of influence in the world. And I think I have two things to share. One is the beginning of the shift of within Canada of recognizing our colonial shadow and the genocide caused by my ancestors, the Anglo white settlers to Canada, towards the First Nations, the indigenous people who have been here since time immemorial. And what is happening is there's a, a unifying sense of strength in various groups standing up for their territory which in many places, especially in British Columbia, where I live, has been degraded by um, corporate interests and extractionist industries. The values being articulated by Indigenous people are values of respect, interdependence, and reciprocity of really a sense of unity and respect for every human being. And these lines of connection go right across from the high Arctic through North America and into and through South America, lines of interconnection of indigenous people standing up for the environment, making environmental changes when they are able and putting forth strong lawsuits in defense of in defense of the land, not just for themselves, but for all of us. So I see that as a rebalance. I mean, it's not gonna happen quickly and it is an expensive and painfully slow process because the Canadian government is not willing, willingly giving up authority and control. But the populace, the people more and more are supporting these initiatives and understanding the merit of the direction that we're being led into by the First Nations people. I felt that was important to share. Um, the other thing is this sense of collective trauma healing, um, the work of Thomas Hugel, also creating international labs to examine various aspects 
and to engage in healing processes for to release collective trauma. And these are attended by people from all over the world. They are a fascinating, strong, international mix of voices. So I wanted to offer that as well. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Deja. Yeah, beautiful to be aware of this. Especially the first, what you said about this, um, the voices for the land growing stronger. And definitely this is being part of this rebalancing process. Thank you. This is Rosita speaking. I zoomed in on the um, the huge waves of migrants and refugees pouring into Europe and pouring into America, into the West, and this bringing uh, perhaps some kind of fundamental transformation in who will be living in these uh, nations in a century from now or something, that the these influences are coming in, the population will be changing. Um, it's just interesting that this is going on and that uh, I always feel there's some level where this is coming from like the world stole it's some kind of decision that these uh, largely southern well southern and eastern peoples are surging into the west and i also saw um, an image of a sunset and it's like something is leaving the west something is going this uh, sun uh, did this incredible arc across the sky and uh, bringing so much light to the earth and something is setting something mm. is going so that was my impression mm. yeah strong picture Rosita thank you It's a big picture that we are holding. Some, we are maybe a little bit speechless about it. I have something to add. Yes. So I have some speech. <laughs> My impression is that um, this the. Uh, divide to west and east it's um, somewhat artificial in perspective that we are looking now in terms of the a world uh, view or world dominance
we all recognize uh, the huge influence of the, of the so-called West, um, Occident, on the world stage in the last few centuries, which manifested mostly as a material focus and interest in material gains is this attitude of conquest uh, coming as an mm, often as an imperial uh, expansions and if we look what's happening in the world now this attitude became dominant regardless of the west or east either it's china or saudi arabia or russia it's the same imperial uh, mode of uh, exploiting resources either it's natural resources either it's geographical or human resources and it's the same dominant in so-called west mm -hmm. i think it would be more correct to look into, in terms of uh this to make a distinction between the uh on the level of uh values that the west and the east or accident and orient bring there we can definitely recognize the that um something that humanity can grow and enrich itself and that's where that distinction is uh quite um can be very fruitful for all of us and so therefore it's not about the, uh, the, 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 the current worldview, as I said, it's unfortunately everywhere more or less the same, but see which side, and when I say side, it's very, uh, I understand it's very, uh, mm. um, not very specific which side brings uh more spiritual values to the common table and then uh, we will see that in each nation there are those sides and that's where those uh, recognition of differences become more clear uh, i'm now currently in the united states and this division on the sides and we, which values those sides represent is very uh, uh, very clear. Though saying this, I recognize that each side uh, tries to put the, the uh, certain values on their banners and thus covering their real politics and real interests. So therefore it's for uh, us to seek to recognize what are the true values and if those values are supported by action. And probably we again we should talk not so much about the governments but about nations if those and nation uh, if those values are really dominant in those uh, nations if that's really a motivating uh factor that uh determines the choices that people make
thank you for this meditation. It's uh, very important questions for us to reflect. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, thank you, Alexander, bringing us deeper here. Um, mm -hmm. There was a lot of reflection going into this, uh, uh, seeing what, how to, how to define this divide and this Occident and Orient, West and East, uh, wasn't, isn't, isn't really what is now very prominent on the world stage. So I am, um, so we cannot just say West and East, uh, like uh, the, actually the Tibetan put it back then. Um, yeah, it's about really to, to open ourselves to what you said, these values, this, uh, the quality of the energy is playing out. And I think that uh, really the, the psychosynthetic approach can help us here. Um, and um, we definitely see a shift now from what was pretty clear for the last few hundred years of uh, the West being the dominant force not only materialistically and, uh, you know, conquest and all this, but also precisely the values that, uh, that has been uh, brought to humanity by the West. As Rosita has said, this, the sun brought so much light um, to our world. And now, Maybe it will not be only the West that brings the light. And uh, we will move from a unipolar to a multipolar world. Um, in any case, things are shifting so strongly. And uh, the best we can do is, you know, together to look at it and see if we can discern something of what wants to happen and make ourselves available to be as helpful as we can with our maybe more trained antennas and ability to move to lift beyond the black and white um, seeing a, a more you know round or oh, i don't know full picture of this Kamamanasic field and the streams within it. In any case, it's a very, very big uh, uh, observation, field of observation. And uh, this, this session is only, you know, the opening, <laughs> the, the, the large overview and um, yeah, thank you for all for all the feedbacks. We are thinking together here, trying to make sense of what's happening and uh, joining forces to be as helpful as we can, especially now towards uh, the big uh, hierarchical conclave in, to, in 2025. to be continued. If there are any last thoughts, we still have a few minutes if anything wants to be said. I would like, uh, this is Helen, I would like um, just to share very shortly uh, one of the foci of, uh, of the meditation, which was um, those 
So many, many hundreds of years of uh, Western seeing, seeing things with the Western lens. Um, uh, I cannot uh, really grab Western East now uh, because it's uh, it's much too um, general. But I could see Europe as being the center, a center of thought movements. And uh, it's a huge field of influence that had uh, that uh, that um, um, that created this uh, what we call the Western uh, the Western thought forms um, outside of Europe that I could uh, I, I saw in the, the image as a nucleus of uh, of uh, civilization in the last uh, few hundred years of development and outside the western world when you brought that in meditation uta i saw bright absolutely bright indian persian egyptian maya mesopotamian uh, <laughs> Mm -hmm. civilizations that uh, <laughs> that have been for for the you know ages and ages and uh, have not been uh, acknowledged um, um, through this uh, European way of of seeing of 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 thinking and um, and I, in my in my lifetime, I have been very sensitive to it because I'm coming from from an Arab country, and uh, so I just wanted to say that uh, this is one of the points uh, mm -hmm. um, in in this meditation. And meditation is so rich that uh, really I sense also it's a, it's a beginning of a, maybe a a path that we're going that we will begin exploring. Thank you. Mm. Mm. Thanks, Helen. Deep stuff. I was getting that we are all one. Uh, our basic values are all the same. We want a family life, maybe children to work, to feed our families, to have, be happy together. The stumbling block, of course, is that we don't recognize that and we fight each other, but we are at essence. It's all that came through is that we are one and we are all the same, the basic essence of it. And our values are the same. Our simple, basic values are the same. But um, I don't know where to go from there. Mm. Yeah, and in the end, we will go there again to be there again. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Kiki. Okay. Yeah, are there any announcements, Alexander, that you would like to make before we close? Uh, yes, I want to share that the 2025 initiative is now updating the mailing service uh, we're trying to improve the way how we deliver information to your mailbox and so we uh, in the last few emails that we sent there was a uh, link to a subscription form so we invite you to update your uh, mailing preferences how you receive information about our events and so I will uh, Put the same link now uh, 
in uh, in the chat box. So please uh, take a couple minutes to update your mailing preferences. Um, here is the link in the chat. Thank you. Okay. Right, our next Nations Lab session will be in on March 26. Um, so let us hold this picture of planetary psychosynthesis as a template. And let us close the session with the first rendition of the Great Invocation. Let the forces of light bring illumination to mankind. Let the spirit of peace be spread abroad. May men of goodwill everywhere meet in a spirit of cooperation. May forgiveness on the part of all men be the keynote at this time. Let power attend the efforts of the Great Ones. So let it be and help us to do our part. Oh. 